Gates to start the 55th Worship Parade, the first competitive event of the day, Concourse Day on Sunday morning. Uh, these folks have been here for several hours putting the final details, touches on their cars, preparing them. Uh, if you see people in the uh, yellow golf shirts, they're the judges. Uh, the rest of the folks with the uh, pretty white signs in front of their cars are Concour entrants. Everything from touring, where they're touring, they're judging just the uh, top of the car, the interior, the engine, to the full, where they actually do the undercarriage. So we're going to bring you shots of different cars being judged, talking to some of the owners, and giving you a taste of what it's like to be at the Concours at the Porsche Parade. One of the treats here at the Concours are the Porsches that dis display the early part of Porsche history. And we've got quite a few of them, especially the 356. It's an amazing turnout of coupes, speedsters, roadsters, all in Concours, better than showroom condition. These are cars that have been prepped to the max, many of them driven to the parade, and finished and touched and put on in the garages, in the Concours prep area, just for this show. It's amazing, the uh, attention to detail. Many times, the factory will even comment that these cars left better than they did when they left the factory back in the 60s. Well, you've seen the cars that are prepared for Concours, and these are the cars that are Q-tip, polished, pampered. There's also the cars that people are proud of, but they're not quite show cars, and that's what the Porsche corrals for. These are people who are proud of their cars, want to park them, want to show them, but don't exactly want a team of judges to tell them what's wrong with it. And this is one of the more popular parts of the Porsche parade. People can come, show off their car. And as you see, it's a, essentially a first come, first serve. The early birds get the front rows and it works on from that. We have license plates from all around the country. Porsches of different years, different colors, many stock, many modified, race cars. The advantage this year at the Pheasant Run is that the Concours Corral is right behind the hotel. So unlike in previous years where you had to take a shuttle to the event, this year it's a simple walk from your hotel room to the golf course in a fairway and you've got a spectacular view on a Sunday morning of one of the biggest collections of Porsches in the country. Okay, we had a special treat roll into the corral. Uh, we have Randy Kaplan from Cimarron Region, second parade, and he's brought a, uh, his toy to show off to everybody. Uh, Randy, what year is the uh, Carrera GT? It's a 2005. And uh, have you done any uh, mods? It looks like the wheels might be different. Yes, I put some different wheels on it, and then the uh, on the back where where the engine covers are, the mesh covers, I painted them black so you could see the engine through it. They're normally silver. That and a, a personalized license plate, of course, you need one of those. And did you drive it all the way from Oklahoma? No, I I didn't drive it that far. My wife didn't want to drive that far in this car. It's kind of noisy. <laughs> and I'm sure this thing attracts a little bit of attention, especially from law enforcement. Uh, yes, that's why I always travel with my Valentine one. <laughs> <laughs> but you've obeyed the speed limits because we know all PC cars <laughs> obey the speed limit, uh, especially in a Carrera GT. Well, this is a beautiful car, and one of the neat things, and the biggest way to get a crowd is uh, when you turn the motor on because this thing has an incredible symphony of sound. So uh, Randy's agreed to hop in and uh, and do a couple revs up for us so you can hear what a uh, Carrera GT sounds like, especially on a Sunday morning. Okay. It's all yours, Randy. This doesn't wake up everybody in the tower, nothing will. That is the sound of a whole lot of happy horsepower here on a Sunday morning at the Porsche Parade.